Good morning. It is about just about 8 a.m. I slept okay. First half of the night, not so well. Kind of tossed and turned. I heard a deer or something walk through this part at the beginning of the night. But the rest of the night was just dead quiet. And I think I slept pretty solid from 4.30 to 7.30, but before that it was every couple of hours I'd kind of wake up and toss and turn. But no different than how I usually sleep up here. The sun's kind of hiding behind those clouds right there, but it's up. Somebody's dog drinking over there. <laughs> There's a couple ladies camped up there that just over that hill. That dog greeted us on the way in. It's really sweet. And there's a group somewhere up in those trees I mentioned yesterday and they got quiet around 10. I got up around 4.30 p. And I still didn't see much in the way of that meteor shower that everyone was bragging about, so... I mean, Joe and I saw a few of them before we went to bed, but... Nothing that I would call a shower. Anyway, um... I stood out here for a while and just looked at the amazing stars. No light pollution, you know, Milky Way is incredible. My eyes are still kind of a little bit of a puffy face. Every time I sleep at this altitude, my face gets a little swollen by morning. Anyway, it was just dead quiet for most of the night. Not even the sound of any, you know, other than that deer or whatever walked through here. Just nothing. Just so quiet. Joe just got up. Wandered off into the woods, so Double Spitfire Camp has been a success. I was very warm. Joe said he was too. I think it's the size of these tents. There's nowhere for our body heat to go, and so at first I went to bed with my puffer coat on and my flannel shirt and everything you see I have on here, but then uh God, in the middle of the night, I was just roasting, so I took the coat off and just slept under my down blanket. And usually there comes a point where I get a little bit cold, especially just before the sun rises. I didn't get cold at all. I'm very comfortable. It, it didn't get as cold as we thought it would. It, you know, it stayed in the 50s, and I thought for sure it would get into the upper 40s at least, but... That's the warmest it's been up here for me this whole backpacking season. There's kind of a haze out there over the whole lake, and I think that's the smoke from those fires in California and Oregon. So it's been very peaceful, very, very beautiful quiet and warm and good food, good friend, and good experience. Had a mishap with the bear bag. We hung it just a ways back here. We had to hang it in the dark because we ate dinner so late. We had to put everything away after the after we lost daylight. The mishap was this and a paracord thing that my son made me to help throw it up into the tree that I've shown in a few other videos. The cue ball came out of the paracord. So I'll have to have my son Ash repair that. I'm not quite sure how he wraps it, but we managed to get it tied around a rock and get that up over a limb traditional way 
So, I'll show you where the bear back is. There's a Sasquatch named Joe. Hey, it's a gray jay. Hey, buddy. Scavengers of the forest. We're being invaded by those gray jays. The what? Those gray jays. Those. Yeah. They're just so not afraid of people. It's crazy. A couple just flew in by me too over there. They want to see if we dropped anything. Mm -hmm. They're a pretty bird, aren't they? Yeah. Smart. <laughs> How are you feeling? Like I've been run over. <laughs> really? Yeah. I could. <laughs> I, I look at two probably. Nah, no, you're fine. No, oh, thanks. I got more sleep than usual though up here. So. Did you? It was so quiet. No. Like eerie. almost eerie. Dead quiet. Yeah. yeah. How did you end up sleeping? From after I got up to pee, I was fine. I was pretty solid. Oh, good. But before that, not right so good. Pee. Yeah. <laughs> the later it got in the morning, the more. I'd fall asleep for a bit, but then I'd wake up. I could tell the apnea must have been, I must not have been breathing, my heart's racing. And, yeah. But at least I, I would sleep a little bit, dream. Yeah. You know, which is good. But I am seriously dehydrated. Oh. Yeah, me too. My mouth's really dry. I had a dream that I pissed, pissed off a freight crew at a Home Depot. A bunch of big redneck guys with long beards. My kids were with me, and these these guys were chasing us out of the store. I was like, I'm going to be a Karen. I want to see your manager. I remember saying that in the dream. <laughs> I have no idea where this dream came from, but they, they hopped in their big old redneck truck and were chasing us. I was driving some white sedan. My kids were scared, and I'm driving through the Home Depot parking lot. These guys are all piled in a truck chasing me. <laughs> Don't even ask me what that dream meant. Usually I get some kind of meaning out of my dreams, but not that one. So right at the base of this tree, there's our bear bag up there. Well, mine and Joe's both. Just hanging up there. Untouched through the night. You can see it a little better. Time to get it down. Breakfast this morning for me is going to be grits and that blueberry cobbler that came with my MRE last night. So that would make a good breakfast component. So here's what we came up with. The cue ball was wrapped up in here and it popped out when I threw it up over the limb. Unwrap our friend here. I didn't get too complex with how I wrapped this. This brave little pine tree held our food all night. Both of us had ant problems in our tent overnight. These big, like, half inch to one inch ants. I found several in my tent through the night and Joe's still finding them and I don't know how they're getting in. It's no see them mesh, but they found a way, didn't they? They did. And Joe thinks they probably just were on our clothes or something when we climbed in. Because they were on everything. They were crawling on my water bottle, crawling over our food, and yep. they, they didn't care. No, they don't. Indiscriminate. They wanted spaghetti. <laughs> be nice if some of those gray jays would come in and clean them up. Yeah, yeah. I only have half a liter of water right there, so I'm going to go fill this one up. It is a beautiful, peaceful morning.
think I'll just fill up right here like I did yesterday. It looks swampy, but that's actually long, this long skinny grass just growing up through the water. So, it's not like, if it wasn't clear, I wouldn't even use it. But all of this is just crystal clear. And there are no fish in Bench Lake. They don't stock this. And every time I've been here, there's been no pooling in the water. And I put out a comment last year when I hiked to this asking if anyone knew if there were fish in here and everyone said no there's no fish in that lake so if you're gonna fish when you come up here it's down the trail at Notch Lake that's where they are it's just a nice quiet calm lake We'll go treat this and let it sit while I get some water going for the grits. And instead of using the heating element to heat the food, I'm just going to put the cobbler in some boiling water and heat it up that way. Or some hot water anyway. And lunch will be... I want to eat that. I'm going to be brave and eat that uh, that meat patty thing with the tortilla. And that'll be my lunch. My breakfast. Very simple. Grits and blueberry cobbler. I ran out of this bottle. I've emptied this one. I've been using it all summer. There's one half a tablet in there or something. Some fragment. But I've got another one. Brand new. Still got the cotton in it. You can see how the iodine changes the color. Just two tablets. Let it work its magic. It's worked well all summer. I haven't gotten sick or anything. I haven't used the GoPro much on this trip. I just haven't felt like it. So I don't know how much GoPro footage we'll have in this video. Just, uh, sometimes I can't find a place to use that. I, I end up using this camera here that you're seeing this on most of the time, so. I do like to have it as a backup, though, for water. If it rains or if I want to film something underwater or something. Came in really handy on the last trip. We wouldn't even have video if not for this. The sound on this is terrible. Some of the newer ones have much better sound. They're up to like... Uh, the GoPro 9 now, and this is a Hero 5 Black, and so the sound isn't very good. I've come a long way. Anyway, I think this is enough to start the grits with. These guys are all about us dropping our food. They're just hoping. You know. They're curious little buggers. I think it's fun myself. They come in really close and just like hover and just like watch us. Yep. You drop anything yet? You got anything good? Anything going? With a bird's eye? Yeah. So here's Joe's system. If you listen close you can hear it working. Pretty sweet. Just got it hanging from a tree right here. Effortless. What? It's effortless. Yeah. I do like that part of it. Yeah. It takes some time. Yeah. Well, it's no different than waiting for my tablets to... This is probably faster than half an hour, but waiting for my tablets is... Um, meh. You know, I'm, I'm definitely going to switch to drops next time next year okay. i'm going to finish out this season with the tablets i'm determined <laughs> but i think the drops will probably work better because the those purification tablets just don't want to dissolve all the way a 
What a beautiful morning. Smoky, but beautiful. That's actually blue sky above us, and the rest is smoke. Makes me sad. The grits are in the water. I'm just letting them thicken up, and I'm waiting for this water so that I can heat up my cobbler too. Well, there's the grits. They're a little runny. I think I put too much water in. I'm only having one package. I have two, but I'm just not starving this morning, so. Want some? I brought this. I'll probably try that in a couple hours Smoke or something. Smoke three bean chili. Huh? Yeah, and it's, uh, it's like 14 bucks. But yeah. That's why I don't, but it's these backpacking meals, dude, are getting more expensive. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? I used to get Mountain House meals for like seven bucks. Yeah. Six bucks. Yeah. And now they're 12. Like, everywhere. The simplest meal is like $12. And even before COVID, they'd spiked up. Real food, real adventure. Good to go. That's Joe's lunch later. I have to be careful about what I eat, so this doesn't have any like uh, MSG and real high levels of salt, so which is good. Yeah. I'm eating grits <laughs> <laughs> and cobbler. <laughs> Joe was reminiscing yesterday about a what, what was it you ate? It was a maple donut. <laughs> How long ago? This is like probably a month ago. Or so. <laughs> and he was sitting here like. Oh man, that donut was so good. <laughs> like a month ago and he's just dreaming about it. It was funny. It's true though. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> Meh. You know what that sound is? What? There's a little, they're called pikes. Or pikas or something. And they live in the rocks. There's oh. rodents over there. I saw him running around. There he is, there he is. See him running? Yeah. Oh, I saw him earlier. He too. keeps hopping up on a rock and going, Pikas? Meh. Meh. <laughs> they literally say meh. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Meh. Meh. I'm not impressed with you guys. <laughs> so Joe and I were just talking about our Spitfire tents. And it's probably the most yeah. enduring tent of everything I've ever bought. I still use it. Like I used it last year at Shepherd Lake, mm -hmm. even though I had other tents available, better tents, better made, bigger, mm -hmm. more space. Mm -hmm. I still really enjoy using yeah. mine. I, I think it's it's really cool. I like the color. Uh huh. Something about it. The neon green. Yeah. And I like I like the fact that it's Eureka. I don't yeah. know why. Maybe just because they're an old American company. Yeah. But it was fun to buy from them. I remember thinking that. One of the first tents I bought for backpacking was the Eureka Solitaire. <laughs> and it's a, it's basically a bivy tent. You can't sit up in it at all. And that's what led me to this tent, is mm -hmm. I got trapped in it in the desert in a downpour. I was laying down in this tent, Remember this? and I realized I couldn't change my clothes. I couldn't do anything but lay there and listen to it rain. Just deal with it. It was watertight. It did a great job. But, it was but like... I was just... This tall. Yeah. It's like just Four enough room baby. to lay down in. Yeah. <laughs> and it was raining hard enough that all I could do is lay there and do nothing. Yeah. You know. That's not fun. And that's when it occurred to me I need something I can sit up in. So yeah. I stayed with Eureka, which is a pretty affordable brand. Yeah. It's it's not high end backpacking gear or anything. But I don't think these weigh very much, do they? Mm -hmm. I think without without the footprint. I didn't, I didn't bring one this time. It was oh, yeah, like yeah. three and a half pounds of steaks, which is not yeah, bad. Not bad at all. I mean, for 125 bucks. Mm -hmm. that's pretty well, good. I have. I now use the Outdoor Vitals Dominion too, mm. and that weighs five pounds. But it's it's palace compared to. Yeah. It, it's got lots of room. It's, it's it. decent for even two people. Yeah. Two doors, two vestibules. Two people could fit in there. Your gear in the vestibules. It's it's a palace, and and that's what I've been using all this year backpacking yeah but it's still wonderful to pull this thing out and it's just enough room but the, the yeah. beauty of it the point i was making was you can sit up it's a luxury i didn't have in the solitaire is i bought this because you could sit up yeah. in it and do something or change your clothes yeah. or whatever there's enough height even on your pad right to, mm -hmm. i can just do it too and yeah which is nice 
but you have to kind of center everything just right. Mm -hmm. So you're you're taking ma making good use of the space. Yeah. You know, but so how do you fit in there? Do you? I fit all right on the pad and everything. Yeah. yeah. You can kind of cross legged and yeah, and and still still fit. But lengthwise, it's kind of I have to make sure I'm all the way up yeah. towards the top. Otherwise, my feet you know, like if I'm on my back, then my feet um, hit size 14s hit pretty easy. Size 14. I'm an 11. <laughs> Which is probably a little big for your height. Yeah. But you don't have to deal with this. I got little feet. Yeah, I've never re really been rained on hard in it. Yeah. It's supposedly. I haven't either. It supposedly leaks just a little bit up at the top of the zipper if you don't seal it. All right, I haven't bothered to rinse my pot out from the grits. And some of that is because I'm just going to use this water for to heat up the bag, the MRE bag for the cobbler. It hasn't, I haven't put the uh, clarification tablets in yet, but it doesn't matter because I'm not going to be drinking the water that I'm putting in here. So what I'm going to do is just tuck this in like this and put just enough water to heat it up. And then I'll put some clarification tablets in the rest of this for later. There we go. Nice. And then we'll, in the meantime, we'll purify the rest of the water. I should say clarify. It has been purified by the iodine. Yeah. It's been a half hour at least. Probably longer. Just leave that. Like it is that. convenient if you don't mind waiting. Yeah, it is. Well, as you can see, the water is much clearer now, more drinkable. I'll have to fill up the other bottle in a little bit. But I've got a boil going and that's enough. I just wanted the bag kind of heated through is all. So, it is cobbler time. Oh yeah. That's almost liquidy. Liquidy? Is that a word? Probably not. Probably not. Probably isn't either. <laughs> there it is. Cherry blueberry cobbler. It's almost too warm in there. It's supposed to be a little thicker, but... Let's see what it looks like. It looks like... I've had this before, so... It looks like vomit, and I'm not being, I'm not trying to be gross, but it seriously looks like somebody, somebody seriously puked this up. Look at that. Want some vomit? Look at that. That's pretty gnarly. Mmm. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Especially heated through like that. I once ate this cold. And it was nasty. I believe it. Well, my breakfast is done and Joe's just getting his mm -hmm. in his face. So <laughs> that is very col colorful oatmeal. You may wonder what I've done. I, I wonder, Joe, what have you done? I, <laughs> I poured my trail, the last of my trail mix into my oatmeal. And it's a good thing I did too. Trail mix. It needed it. But the, the M&Ms are melting in it. Yeah. The shell and all, which kind of surprises me. They but melt in your mouth and in your pot, and but not in, in your, your hands. Oatmeal. Yeah. And then you added some stevia? A little stevia. Bit of stevia. How do you say that? Yeah, it's all right. It's Is not, it? It's not a bad breakfast. Yeah. yeah. It looks filling. Now that it's melt, the, the sugar's melted into it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Sweet. Yeah. What you got in this packet? You got some crystal light. A little bit of crystal light. I just bought that. And then what's um, what's this? The sweet sweeten up the water. Oh, that's more coffee. Oh. That I didn't realize. I thought I it was had. jerky or something. Oh. And then I also have some sriracha cha sauce. 
nice. just in case. Yeah. That stuff's great in a lot of things. Is it? Yeah. Often. Just spices it up. Steal some packets from somewhere. <laughs> I probably still have a big bag of them, so. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, have some. Cool, cool. Hmm. Starting to feel like somebody. Starting to perk you up? Mm hmm Good deal. Yeah, I've got a kind of a mess going on over here. We always do this though. We always make a huge mess. We do. And then we we'll clean it up. We always do, but in the meantime, while meals are being made, it's just like the city dump over here. <laughs> <laughs> Garbage over there. That's uh, a mess. Anyway, I need to go fill that second bottle again and so you can see what I mean by the tablets not dissolving like they should. And there's those those a-hole little ants that are crawling on everything. I don't hear you little bugger. The little big ants. Show your face. Yeah. Still kind of a cluttered mess from breakfast, but that's okay. Oh, Bob Jr. Got covered with the, the towel there. I'm going to take him with. We're going on a kind of an exploration. We're just at the trail comes in along the lake and it continues on that way so neither of us have been past this point right here we're just curious what's up the trail a little ways ultimately you end up at a lake called meadow lake and another lake called ibantic lake but i think you have to hike around notch mountain here to get to those and we're not interested in doing a full-on expedition so what we're going to do is just explore a little bit just see what's down there and just play it by ear those cliffs are so impressive you know somebody's climbed those mm -hmm. easy for them not me all right the trail is this way Hi. Oh. <laughs> Well, we're back on the main trail, heading away from camp this way. We came in to camp that way, and our, our camp is just right up in there. So mm -hmm. Joe and I are in for an adventure. <laughs> not really. We're not going to go too far, but... Just going to look around a little bit. Yep. Should be fun. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> This just keeps going down, and then it goes up, and I, I know it's a lot of forest before you even run into a lake. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It looks like just some nice meadows down in here, though. It is pretty. I do love the winners. So, it looks like there's usually runoff coming through here. You can see where it usually flows through down into this beautiful meadow. It's all dried up for the year. We probably won't go much past this point. We just kind of wanted to see what was back here, but there's a lot of these. There are a lot of these little open areas through here that are kind of nice. So it looks like it, it really snakes through here, but it's all dried up. It's kind of sad. It would have been nice to have a spring to draw water from. It, it would have. I've noticed the difference in the taste between really flowing water, because it's naturally filtered to a degree, Yeah. compared to lake water. So if we follow this meadow straight up through here, we'll walk right into our camp pretty sure we're not doing any kind of massive exploration we're just kind of curious what's up with here sometimes that's fun to do when you're when you're on an outing instead of just hanging out at camp the whole time it's nice to just walk around and take in some of the scenery indeed <clears throat> Hope we don't break our ankle <laughs> Joe and I noticed an old fire ring over here. When I say old, it looks like it's been here a very long time, untouched. 
grass growing through it and everything. Look at that. That has been there a long time. Yeah, it looks like it. Somebody a long time ago gathered some sticks. And look, the grass is even growing up through those. That's great. Looks quite old. Yeah. One thing I noticed about this is whoever built this meticulously planned this because the creek would run right through here. That's the dry creek bed coming from the lake. And they'd be camped here. There's their fire. There's their water. Probably a tent right in here. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, this is actually a pretty sweet setup. It just hasn't been used in a very long time. Right. You could probably get a hammock set up somewhere. Yeah. Amongst the trees. Oh yeah, easily. So we kind of made a loop. We hiked down the trail oh, yeah, to, to the bottom and then we came up right through the meadow and then camp is literally like right over here. So not a huge explorer, but fun one. Relics from the past anyway. This campsite is a little bigger and right behind our campsite. It even comes with kitchen tables right here. It says it comes all the way up to my hip. Yep. Hip height. The logs are great too. Get a little group in here. Yeah. Definitely for more people. I mean it would be pretty sweet to have this to yourself too, but it it's definitely made for more people. Plus the pit is huge. It's like all built up. Is this how we walked in, kind of right here? Yeah, I think we cut in through here and then walked up to when we first came in, you mean? Yeah. yeah. And we are back at camp, just like that. If I could see where the, when it's high enough, the water could flow right through there. Yeah. And down. Yeah, we've pretty much decided that's the outlet for the lake, that snaking empty stream bed all the way down through there. Probably flowing pretty nicely in the spring. See, there's camp. It looks like some of the recent monsoonal rains we've had have really washed through here. You can tell by the way the, the soil is laying. I am going to make some lemonade, caffeinated lemonade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I have just enough water in here, I think, for a nice drink. The only thing that's missing is some ice. Mm. I could use some ice in this. That would be amazing. We're, sh we're a little short of ice right now. Right? Yeah, we ran out. We left the cooler about a half mile down the trail. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a huge fan of lemonade. It's one of my favorites. And if it's poured over ice, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Here, here. So, sugar free lemonade. And I'm just working on some more crystal light. Bottoms up. <laughs> <laughs> He's got crystal light. Look, look at what health nuts we are. Sugar free, fruity <laughs> drinks. <laughs> In the mountains. Oh, I'm sure they cause cancer or something. Mm -hmm. I might have cancer, but I ain't getting fat. <laughs> yeah, we pretty mu pretty much have to always have something in this water because it's so foul. Yeah, it has that just strong iodine flavor, and also just the lake itself mm -hmm. doesn't taste as good as a fresh no, mountain doesn't. spring. My words are not forming well up here, dude. No. I keep. 
Well, we neither of us sleep at our peak up here. No. Start Thinner with. air. The whole thing. Mm -hmm. you, just, you get back to your car, you get back home, and you start thinking clearly again, and you notice it. It was driving down the hill. Yeah. Can, there's a point where, you know. Suddenly you just come yeah. back into yourself a little bit. Yeah, a couple times I've gone on one of these, our trips together, and driven down, and then stopped in town in Camas, and taken a, a long nap. Yeah. Because I can finally get some air and yeah. sleep. Sleep yep. good. Sleep better, anyways. So I'm not sure what's going to happen next. Um, the plan is to stay for lunch and backpack out, which is a pretty usual trend for me. The problem is Joe has a seven hour drive back to Boise from here and it's only 10.30 in the morning and I'm not super hungry and neither is he. So I think the MRE lunch may have to wait because Joe's really kind of chomping at the bit. It's a three mile hike out and then he's got a seven hour drive ahead of him after that. So for me, it's a three, three mile hike out and then a two hour drive and I'm back home and showering. So five hours past that is when he'll get home. <laughs> so I feel for him, you know, he may not want to stay until lunch I'm not sure he's over there getting him some fresh water right now if you can call the lake fresh water I guess it is fresh water he's resupplying so I'm not sure what's gonna happen I haven't filmed nearly as much on this trip as I usually do but off camera we've had some really good talks and just kind of talked about life and relationships and some of the struggles we've both been kind of going through over the last, especially over the last year plus. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if lunch is going to happen. Just for Joe's sake, we might pack up and go because, man, seven hours, that's a long drive after all this hiking and camping and whatnot. So, we'll see how it goes. I'll see how he feels about it. So Joe's kind of pointing out here the reason we use filters and tablets and whatnot. Let's see if you can see him. He was kind of squeezing on the bag and there were little things swimming around inside. Yep. Harder to see another up there up here. Yeah. Just those little tiny things. I can see yep. right here. Really a small. Little, look how gross my fingernails are. So I can see him swimming around up yep. here. That is gnarly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want those in my gut. Nope. It's funny how something so small can just destroy you. I've never squeeze had to it. squeeze on my bladder so hard before <laughs> to get it out. Squeeze it like you love it. That's almost disturbing seeing those bugs in there. Yeah. There's a lot of them. Not fun. But the good news is it's all getting caught right there in the middle. It's not making it through. If it does, then so your squeeze. I'm going to pay his hospital bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe and I were talking and we've decided to forego lunch. Neither one of us are hungry. Joe's got a long drive home. And we still have to pack up all this stuff. As I've said a thousand times before, my least favorite part of backpacking is repacking everything before you hike out. I yep. freaking hate it. Yep. But we'll make the best of it. This has been a fun camp out. Double Spitfire. We finally did it, man. Finally made it happen. We've talked about this for years. It's Literally finally here. Years, yep. yep. I feel like I'm filming you like going to the bathroom or something. Because you're like standing there. Well, that's even better. <laughs> and you can hear it. <laughs>
Well, that is it. Everything's cleaned up. We are packed and ready to go. Bob Jr. is excited <laughs> to head back home for a shower and some food. Who doesn't? Isn't. See how happy he is about that? So, you ready for this? I think so. Just a three mile hike out. Just a measly three. Yep. It's actually as hikes go, it's pretty easy. Yeah, hasn't been bad. So my friends, you know what to do. Do yourselves a favor. Get off the couch, get outside, and have some fun. Heck yes. The views, the views are spectacular. And if you can't get outside, come along with us. We could use the company. Heck yes. As Joe continues to look for something. I still can't find my spork. Oh man. Well, hopefully he finds his spork. Oh well. Well. There's other sporks in the world. There are. There's always another spork in the campsite. I am full of profound sayings on this trip. Very much so. All right, we'll see you in the next one, guys. See you guys.